and welcome. My- My name is Amy Bell, and I am the founder and creative director of United Colors of Design Media. And I am so grateful that you've decided to join us here today as we open a deeper conversation around the energy and psychology of color and how it impacts our designs, art forms, mood, and journey on this planet. My mission is to help creative professionals like yourself thrive as entrepreneurs. And we're doing this by meticulously curating content in the areas of education, business, lifestyle, and design inspiration, supporting you in making quantum leaps in your business and personal life. With United Colors of Design magazine, podcast, and TV as our vehicles. Each quarter, we take a look at one specific color working our way through the rainbow. And today, our special guest is going to be seeing their area of expertise through the lens of that color. It's my intention today and every day that we really hear one another by speaking a language that connects us all, the language of color. So let's get this conversation started, shall we? morning everyone my name is amy bell and i am going to be chatting with sherry bros today about feng shui and how it impacts the gold color impacts your business and your home and your office so we need to activate all of that gold energy because we are in the gold edition that is the color for this edition it came out april 1st and we're going to chat with Sherry. I'm just going to bring you on, Sherry. Hello. Good morning, Amy. Good, Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Oh, I always love our conversations because every time I do one of your activations, even just one, big things happen. And I still have my um, my flowers in the right spot that you you know mentioned in a previous uh, um edition so i'm keeping all that water clear and the big huge flowers and right now all i can smell is lilies in this room <laughs> oh, beautiful lovely Woo. yes okay so i just want to introduce people to you to you again by reading your bio and then we'll get right into the 20 tips 20 rules 20 golden nuggets that you gave us for the gold edition and we can sort of pick a few and just chat about those so okay sherry bros she's a certified feng shui practitioner and graduate of the international feng shui school she is also a graduate of the new york institute of art and design where she studied feng shui interior design Sherry is a Red Ribbon professional member of the International Feng Shui, Guild, Feng Shui Guild and has been practicing Feng Shui for over a decade, which I think since we wrote this might be like 12, 11, 12 years, yeah. over, over a decade. Um, she resides in Niagara, Ontario with her husband and her beautiful Maltese fur baby. Welcome, Sherry. Aww. Thank you, Amy, for the lovely intro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How was it? I know that we're right now, just so you know, listeners and viewers, we are working on the yellow edition. So after April 1st, all of us that are involved in the magazine are now putting our heads into the next edition. So we have to go back now and talk about the issue that you're all reading, which is gold. So Sherry, how was gold? Well, gold, ooh, in feng shui, gold is the big kahuna. Uh, Gold, (laughs) gold, really, gold in in, uh, the Chinese culture is just considered the most yang color and metal. Um, And what's so wonderful is because of the the gold is so um, important in the gold, in the feng shui world, 
because of the yang energy from the sun. It infuses that energy. And oh, all, that's where it comes yeah. from. Okay, okay, yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, in feng shui too, um, gold being a metal is also associated with the solar system. All metal in feng shui is associated with the solar system. And the sun being the, the center of the universe and everyone, all the other planets rotating around, it makes it even more dynamic. Mm. In and the Chinese culture also. Yeah, it's not uncommon for Chinese families to uh, give gold, like real gold bars or gold wow. for gifts, etc. cetera. Um, it's very, very auspicious in feng shui. Well, I do know in the, I think it's the Chinese New Year, they're giving like the little gold coins. Yes, yes. For sure. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. what is, um, oh, the Ignat, is that how you say it? Yes. Yeah. It's um, just like in your beautiful magazine. See? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So those yeah. little bolt like things up in the and top. Little, yeah. So that's really, really quite um, auspicious and given to as a, as a gift and also too they you can make your own little you know little ignots too oh. um, out of gold pebbles you know like let's say you go to the nursery to a garden it's summertime um you can go buy a bunch of river rock or large boulders and you just go and purchase a spray can of gold and you can spray all these pebbles really? and make a little river garden in your in your natural landscaping, which I have, I should have taken a picture, but I do have one in our in our Zen garden. <coughs> Excuse me. And also, although it's not the real element, it does produce that type of energy, and that's very common also in China because not everyone can afford, you know, real gold, rocks, and pebbles all over your place. So that's yeah. a fun way to do it too in your home. And it's really pretty. It, you know, it catches the sun. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Really, yeah. It's really fun. It's a great little, a great little, um, so also if you want to get the kids involved too, you know, spraying the rocks, painting them and, and that kind of thing. It's almost similar to a gold money tree, like this little gold tree here. Ooh. This is, uh, this is called a citrine money tree. And uh, the crystals are, they could be some citrine, some could be just glass. But I keep this in the northwest section of my home, which mm -hmm. is considered the most, um, the gold corner in your home, the northwest. And uh, that, okay. that northwest. stimulates, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that is the center of the metal element and the male, the most the male or the breadwinner, the most yang area of the Bagua is the Northwest. It's also the place of heaven's gate and mm -hmm. heaven, heaven being associated with gold. So it's a great place to put your, if you can, if you'd like to get one of these, I think they're available on Amazon. They come in all types of sizes and shapes and that kind of thing. And they're cute. They're really cute. Oh, so I, I okay. like that. So, the male, the section that we should be putting that in is the northwest, which is yeah. the male section of the bagua. Yeah, the and that's, that's right. The direction. Now, if you're not practicing classical feng shui, there's two different baguas. There's a directional bagua and the western bagua. If you don't practice the compass bagua, then the, the help, the place to put this which is called the helpful people and travel and mentors area. It would be as you come in your front door, the right side of your house, the lower right corner as you walk in. Mm. That is for non-directional feng shui. Okay. But yeah. Um, so there's, there's two different, you know, two different methods if you don't really, or you could even put it in the Northwest section of your living room or your your bedroom. I wouldn't put it so much in the bedroom because bedroom should be a little bit more yin, more quiet. You don't want okay. bright, too much energy in your bedroom. Uh, okay, good, good to know. 
<laughs> we don't need to mess with the energy in the no, bedroom. No, no, keep it cool. Keep it chill, chill. Yeah. Keep, it chill. keep it chill. Okay, so in the article that you just showed, here's the um, 20. You can see them all listed here. So I just wanted to pick a couple. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So when you were saying to put this tree, like when you come in and you put it on the lower right side of your front entrance, is that the same as um place gold near your front door to accumulate wealth would you would you put something you could, yeah you could do that you could definitely do that there's really no um just because that the northwest is the best place to activate the wealth and also mm -hmm. it also activates mentors and helpful people like it brings in right clients for you um uh people that can help you on your journey so that yeah. is the most yang area having said that you can also put gold objects at your front door to stimulate well, that, that energy okay yeah uh, so when we walk into you know some businesses that we go into that are owned by asian people or people who practice feng shui um, I'll, you'll see like the gold and the offerings and the fruit and the, um, yes. and the water element kind of as yeah. soon as you walk into the business. Yeah. yeah, that's that's correct, Amy, because gold uh, being a metal is equivalent to the, the water energy in feng shui oh, because okay. gold, this metal makes water. It's in the productive cycle. And people always say, well, how does metal make water? Well, if you heat up metal, cool it down, condense it, you're going to get droplets, water droplets. Okay, and in ancient okay. times, yeah. And uh, in ancient times, that was a form of alchemy. And gold is also equated to alchemy, divinity. And as far as the emperors during the feng shui back in the thousands of years ago, the emperors yeah. wore gold, gold dragons, etc. But to get back to your question about in, if, can you put it in the front door? Of course, you can place gold anywhere really as long as you don't have so much in your bedroom that you can't sleep too much glitter <laughs> right but, okay no, yeah. just the right amount of glitter okay um there is okay let me just see here okay oh here's a word arowana place an arowana yeah. in your home known as the golden dragon by the chinese yeah and it's like a fish if you um it's like a little fish and you've, you've probably seen them in magazines and on Chinese, like you said, when you go into, um, you walk into a Chinese store or a restaurant, you'll see the, it's the shape of a fish yeah. and yeah. And it's gold and it's, it's, it's really gold. You know, it has the gold color and they call that as a very good luck omen, almost like the koi fish, you know, the gold koi fish you see and yeah. gold too. So it's kind of all that family. Um, oh. fish, gold fish are, are very auspicious in feng shui too. So, um. okay. So you gave us 20 examples of how to use gold in your home office or business. And so does someone need to like check, 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 we need to do all 20 or like if you're going to amp it all up, is that going to make it more, is the abundance come raining on you? Like what? How many do we do, no, Sherry? Yeah, you know what? You have to be, you know, like you have to take everything with a grain of salt too. These are the 20 tips are you can take a, as many as you want or not or, not, or one or two. Um, what it basically comes down to, though, is I really do feel like, I, like I said, I love gold. It's a metal. It's more the element of the metal that is activating because mm -hmm. metal in feng shui is a conductor it is the most magnetic element and the elements are very important in feng shui. So any of these tips, Amy, you can use all of them or none of them, you know, or one okay, or two. Okay. So you won't go to, okay. you won't go over Yang is what I, what I'm saying. <laughs> Unless you're in your bedroom, apparently. <laughs> I, I wouldn't go too crazy in there. Definitely no water, no water in the bedroom, no water, not no real water. You shouldn't have water in your bedroom. It's not good for sleep. It's too oh. yay. Like aquariums in that. You shouldn't have an yeah, aquarium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anyone who's got an aquarium in their bedroom. No, maybe some, pe some people's kids do. You know, like 
for study in school. Um, yeah. And that, that, you know, like you said, you have to kind of let, you, a lot of it is common sense too, but metal is the ultimate, ultimate element in feng shui and gold is the, the king. So um, All right. wear it, wear it on yourself, you know, wear gold. If you can't afford the real thing, then, you know, costume jewelry is great too. It's beautiful. And it just I, put, I did put on my gold earrings yeah, today. So <laughs> That's also, great. Yeah. And gold um, is also, so, yeah. Okay. I just wanted to ask you about, um, you said here, add gold colored pulls to knobs and doors in your kitchen decor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know how for a long time we had the the fad was like the chrome or stainless steel and now the brass colors are coming back mm -hmm. the, the gold tones in the kitchens and stuff so um i would really recommend that because it has that nice uh yang energy where and the kitchen also too is a great place to put some gold because mm -hmm. it's also the most nourish nourishing part of the home you want to keep that activated and keep that fiery uh, energy in there. The stove has the fire. Um, so I'd really recommend to get gold in your in some of the design in your kitchen um, and keep that nice and warm and keep that element. Um, okay. Yang, yeah. yeah. Ooh, oh, okay. yeah. Um, oh, carry a gold wallet or handbag for the law oh, of attraction. Yeah, like a lot of people, you can feng shui your wallet, you can feng shui your purse, you can feng shui, although it's not really like true feng shui as in a home. But um, I would suggest, yeah, carrying carrying some gold in your wallet, carrying uh, or a gold crystal, gold crystal, gold. Uh, oh, you mentioned um, yeah, oh, like, like citrine, tiger's eye. Yeah, yeah, tiger's eye is beautiful. Carnelian is fabulous. Um because the, the universe knows, the universe will be attracted by that. So it's the law of intention, it's the feng shui energy, it's calling in those, oh, those angels. You know, can we, they, can we say yeah, that a yeah. $100 bill is a gold bill? Which one, excuse me? A $100 bill, if you keep one in your wallet, it's now kind of bright in Canada. Yeah, it is. A little it bit is. Of yeah. A, a, well, you know, and it has the gold writing, right? The letters are almost like a shiny element. So that is awesome. Yeah, I would, I would, I, yeah, I would recommend that too. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So you had mentioned when we first started that if you don't have a solid gold bar or a solid gold ignot, that you can use the river rocks and spray paint them. You can print, so you could spray paint anything oh. anything in the gold color as long as that gold color is there yeah yeah we have in my garden i had a big um you know those metal wall arts you can get of yeah. the sun. and when we bought it it was like an ugly gray so my husband sprayed it gold for me and it's just beautiful and it oh. radiates you know you can feel the energy you really can and uh, it's something like i said it's something to bring the kids in with it's a nice you know little exercise for your whole family and um it does it it's it's a happy feeling gold is warm and magnetic and uh has that just a little bit of that red in there not as like yellow doesn't yellow the yellow rays on its own mm -hmm. the gold has that warmth right it has the warmth. yeah 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 okay what else do we have Ooh, gold colored dishes and tableware yeah you know you know when you've been to a let's say a tea Let's say you're having a few um, lady friends over or, or another couple and you really want to activate that good energy around and make, make it happy. You know, I really suggest getting some dinnerware with gold on it. Like, you know, the gold, the gold plating or it does, of course, it doesn't have to be the real gold. Gold is very expensive uh, and it just brings some warm feeling to you know, your meal and people. I, there's something about gold that everybody loves, yeah, right? That's it's warm, true. you know. Yeah. Isn't yeah. there, you know, uh, eating think, a piece of cake on a gold fork with yes. a gold fork? See, this seems it's so lux luxurious, opulent. Opulent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. opulent and elegant. And so, wherever you can kind of sneak, um, sneak a little bit of gold into your design, you know, what I also do, one thing I 
do do like is uh, gold frames on artwork um, is really pretty. Can you hear that? <laughs> Okay, hold on. talking this about gold. What happens when uh, when we talk about gold? I've got somebody yeah. trying to call me here. Hold on. Oh, okay. Luma is Luma. I'm live. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Luma. Yeah. Oh, Luma, Luma. Luma <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, okay, I want to talk about wearing gold to a meeting. Okay, good, good question. Yeah. Uh, let's say, hmm, let's say you're having, you want to go, you're going to a job interview or you're seeking new clients, maybe. You're having a, giving a presentation for a new design or you're trying to get a contract. Yeah. Uh, I really recommend wearing gold on your person because the energy you know gold can be used in medicine too in energy medicine because gold is very like i once i said it's a conductor and the energy it exudes is yang it's positive it's auspicious energy and you when you're wearing that gold your energy is going to be uplifted and mm -hmm. it's going to be radiated to the person that you're in business with and you, sometimes you might even know, I don't mean go in there with a glitzy gold go-go dress on, but, um, you know, wear your gold. It will really, really solidify, I bet, the deal you're trying to make. Wow. Okay. So the energy that is emitted outward yeah. and also inward to your energetic field is yeah. going to serve to amp up even the energy in the room and the conversation and all that stuff. Okay. Because there's lots of um, ideas on what to do before you go into a meeting, you know, do the arms stretched out, breathe yes. in, you know, do all that. But adding the gold element is also a bit of a subtle way just to make you feel. And when you put those earrings on or the necklace or the bracelet or the ring with intention that this is going to put out the good energy, then you know, you'll remember it, I guess. That's right. So you have, so now you have a, another layer of magnetic energy that you are exuding and ra radiating and also internalizing too. So it has right. a really, yeah. So it's bang on for that. So I okay. recommend that. Yeah. What else do we have? So if you're going to add the gold into your office space, can you look at your office space as, it having its own bagua so you would put the gold in like the northwest corner of your office yeah you certainly can and i'm just going to show you something that i have here that i use at my desk and it's i'll just show you maybe you can see it i'm going to shut it up i have a gold task oh. see nice okay i use this in my office and it is in my west corner. It is in the northwest corner. Of course it so. is, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> it would seem wrong to put it anywhere else. Yes, it would. And I also, you know, I keep this little fella too in that area. But I move it around depending where the flying stars fly in every every year. See, this is, this is why we need to have you in our corner. Honestly, people, if you're listening, Sherry is amazing. She's got mm -hmm. a group on Facebook called The Colors of Feng Shui. And I really highly suggest you join the group because she gives, you give a ton of information away. And I love that I can go in there and just feel like, okay, here's a tip that she's giving me today and I can go and do that one thing. But specifically speaking, Sherry has done like a whole um analysis on my home and the energies of my home which we'll have to do soon again when i move yeah oh definitely oh i can wait <laughs> and uh maybe you know i'll send you a little picture of the place before uh and the address before i actually choose it oh yeah. and a floor plan don't forget the floor plan <laughs> yeah yeah, so I should, I could, yeah i think that'd be great because then i could I'll match it up with your trigram because your house has its own trigram and so do we. And then you can see if it will be supportive for you or not. Oh my gosh. It's so complicated. 
And, and, you know, you've been doing this for over 10 years, so it's kind of a gradual progression of knowledge that you're building up. But for me, when I hear you say all this stuff, I'm like, oh, dear, I need you to just come and look at it because um, it's just so intense. And if you're reading online about Feng Shui, like we, I didn't even know there was a flying stars and there's a traditional and there's a Western and there's all these different kinds of feng shui so you may be getting messages crossed by doing your own google searching so my i believe you would agree like choose a stream and just go with it so the energies aren't getting mixed up yeah exactly when you have the two baguas uh if you're going to stick with the the non-directional then stay with that one it has its merits also um, there's always been this kind of conflict between West and classical feng shui, but I really do find that most of it is energy, although I have to admit, I do tend to work with the classical because they have the energies that change, like feng shui isn't just one thing and you put it there forever. The energies change every year and it's ancient. It's from the ancient teachings. Having said that, any form of energy work that you do in your home will help you. You know, it mm-hmm. will help your energy. But classical feng shui is great because it's also a predictive analysis. Like when I see the numbers of the stars, I can predict maybe you're going to, you have to be careful about specific parts of your body because there's specific parts of your body are even related to mm-hmm. directions and energies. So it's a very, you're right, Amy, it's very, very many layers. Yeah, very many always. Layers. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. But it's a lot of fun and it can activate. It does. I've seen a lot of fabulous things happen with myself and my clients. So, um, yeah. So well, for me, for sure, I've seen many activations every time I do something that you've suggested in your group or in the article or from the specific um, plan that you did for my house. Like it's working. So I'm I'm going to speak. And you're giving, you know, every year you do the energies for the year. And so, you know, you give tips on how to uh, activate it or safeguard. I've had the the salt remedy um, going for the beginning of the year. I did that. Um, What else was I? What else did I do? The floral activation with the vase and the water. I've done that. Yeah. Um, uh, Putting metal in certain spaces. Oh, I have a question. Yes. Not everybody knows or is going to have a feng shui practitioner look at a potential home because they found this home and they love this home. And then they come to you and they're like, oh, can you feng shui this up for me? And you're like, "Uh oh, like this isn't the best for you. So is there remedies that you can do to kind of um, tune the house to the people that are living in it? Even if it's there is. Yeah, there's things you can do. Uh, like let's say, let's say the trigram of your house is east is an, is an east group, and you're a west group. Well, there are things that I can do that will make the house more supportive for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because I've been doing a lot of numerology, and I'm going. I'm planning on moving soon, and we're looking for a home. So I'm getting overwhelmed with the numerology of the addresses. I was going crazy every time I was looking at something. I'm like, no, I don't want that number. I don't want that number. So I have to just kind of let that go and allow the universe to pick the house for me. And hopefully when I show it to you, you'll be like, yes, this is awesome, Amy. But um, I, it makes me happy to know that even if I love the home and it's not the perfect energy for me, that you can have some remedies to, to fix Definitely, it. Definitely, yeah. And, and one thing, another thing too in feng shui, there is really no perfect home. You're always going to have specific specific some specific directions and areas of your home that are not as are more challenging than others. Mm-hmm. But that's what's so great about the annual energy; it changes. So maybe one year uh, your living room might not be the greatest, but you can remedy that. You just yeah. don't spend ta- as much time in those spaces where the energy might be a bit challenging. And uh, and there are there are ways. There's we call the remedies and. Mm-hmm. Uh, ancient, ancient cures or that kind of thing but i really do suggest if you if people and this isn't uh i, I am not into fear mongering a lot of a lot of feng shui um consultants use fear to get people to i like, don't go in there it has bad energy that's 
that's not really fun true feng shui everything can be remedied um there's some things that can't be but there's ways around it you can li learn to live with it but i do recommend that if you are going to be moving it takes you know 10 minutes for me to to, to go through the flying stars sorry about that that's and okay. um to, to let you know if you know it's going to be supportive for you mm -hmm. and um go with you go with your feeling go with your heart because it's all about the heart and the mind and i think if you have that intuition uh, i think that's also a really that's also feng shui because it's about the environment mm. that is what feng shui is arranging the environment to enhance our energy to help us get gain our goals in life that's really what it is um so let me know and i'm here to help okay want. all right well again i would like everyone to join this group i'm going to put the um yeah. the link to your group in the chat so people can come join and honestly there is a ton of information you know that you give daily uh, but go back in the feed of the group because there's a ton of stuff there too. And if you want to find out about what the energies are for 2022, I believe you did write some, write a post yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, June halfway, well, we're almost at June. We're halfway through the year. So you can start now and change the course of 2022 for sure. For if it needs sure. a little end. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And also too, on the, in the group, Go under files in the menu because I've also I've also um, oh, yes. added quite a, quite a lot of information in there too. So okay. go ahead and and if you want to join, just just um, request you to join because right now I have the group uh, in a private method. But if things keep going the way they are, we might go over to public to a, a little bit larger group. So okay, right now, we just have to add request and you'll be in right away. Awesome. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Sherry. Always a pleasure talking to you. Always so cool to find out how to activate more abundance in our lives. So there are many more tips in uh, Sherry's article. So I, I'm going to put the link also to the gold edition so you can have all 20 of them at your fingertips and you can pick and choose which ones you want to put in your home. And I wish you an amazingly happy day, Sherry. Thank you, Amy. You too. And happy house hunting. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I'll be in touch about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found Sherry's information really informative. And, you know, the gold is all about activating that abundance and alchemy in your life. So take some of her tips. It's free. Have a great day, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the United Colors of Design podcast, connecting all designers and creatives through our shared love of color with your host, Amy Barroso.